handouts for the section. The last section of the book, which gosh, you wrote, you read about this a long, long time ago, but what happens when the partnership ends? When a partnership ends or what's called liquidated, which you would know means how fast can we get everything into cash, it ends both the legal and the economic life of the partnership. The question is why? What would prompt the partnership to be done? Perhaps the business is sold. Now, if the business is sold off, all partners have to be in agreement of it. One partner could, unfortunately, die, or they could file bankruptcy. Those are the three big reasons why a partnership would be done or be liquidated. I thought so. No, there's not, there shouldn't be two pages. All right, there are four steps to liquidating a partnership, or in other words, ending the partnership. And you really need to do them in this order. Um, we're gonna go through the examples here during the lecture, but then we're also going to go through the process in exercise 12.9. But to liquidate, here's what needs to happen, steps one, two, three, and four, and they should go in this order. First up, you gotta get all of your non-cash assets into cash. So basically every non-cash asset so you're gonna sell all your extra inventory, you're gonna sell all your equipment, you're gonna maybe bargain with the insurance company to, you know, if you've prepaid it to get some of that back. You're gonna take all of your non-cash assets and turn them into cash, you're liquidating them. And instead of like considered like revenue, because it's not really revenue, the book calls it a gain or loss on that realization circle the word realization in your notes because that's what it's called. When you sell all of your non-cash -cash assets to get cash in a liquidating scenario, it's called a gain or loss on realization. What's that? How are you going to gain on it if you sell them for more than their book value? Then you split them up. Yes. So if you make money on the sale, it's called a gain on realization. If you lose money, it's a loss. And then it's kind of divvied like net income or net loss would be. Yep, and we'll walk through that process. Second step, what Cassidy just asked about, you divvy it to all the partners based on how the ratios are set up. If it's a 50-50, they get half of the gain. If it's a 70-30, they divvy it that way. So you basically sell them first and then you divide that up to all of the partners however their ratio is set up. Third step, you gotta pay all the bills. You take all of your payables, whether it's accounts payable or notes payable, and you divvy that up. And then finally, whatever money is left, that's what you actually distribute to the partners based on whatever their capital balances are. You know, if they're running some capital balances, then they get that too. So again, the steps. Non-cash assets into cash, divided among the partners, minus off what we owe on all of our liabilities, and then get that actually distributed to the partners, including any of their capital balances that remain. And it really needs to be done in this four-step process order. This should be in your notes, right? Okay, so they list 
the classic balance sheet of assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. It's listed there. It looks like we have $5,000 cash. Do we have to do anything with that? No, because cash is already cash. It's already liquidated to its cash form. But we need to take these guys and sell them in order to get even more cash. Hopefully a uh, gain on realization. But then don't forget this contra asset is hanging there because although equipment's valued at 35,000, accumulated depreciation at this point for the partnership is eight. And then you'd take a look at these two payables hanging here and go, um, we need to pay our bills. And then each of the partners already have some established capital. So they're gonna get to have that money. Do you have the little T accounts on your sheets too? Okay. So all of this will be impacted as we liquidate. Here we go, are you ready? Four step process, one more time. I don't think this part's in your notes. I've redone this so many times. Oh, it is? Good. One more time, here's our four step process. First, we need to sell off one, two, three of these assets. Okay, so let's do that first. ACE sells all of the non-cash assets. Because remember, cash is already cash. It looks like we're going to sell off our AR, our inventory, and our equipment for $75,000. Had this been a color printout, that would have showed up in red. The book value of these assets is sixty. dollars so we sold assets for 75,000 and they're valued at 60. Do we have a gain or a loss of the realization? We have a gain. That's kind of like revenue, okay? So what's the journal entry gonna look like? Cash coming in. Cash is going up by 75,000 because that's what we sold the assets for. What's going to happen to all the assets? They're gone. So we have to zero them out. Accumulated depreciation is actually going to be a debit because then that will zero it out. It normally has a credit balance because it's a contra asset. So it's going to act very much opposite of all the normal assets. Wipe that out. That's gone. Where am I getting these numbers? From that previous slide. Okay. What's our what's going to be one of our credits? AR. Paid off. Or they paid us, excuse me. That asset is being reduced because we sold it. It normally has a debit balance, so a credit wipes it out. We also are going to credit inventory and we're going to credit equipment. So these three assets are all going down because we sold them. That is the entry to liquidate the non cash assets. How much cash do we have now? And it's not 75,000. In our pockets, we actually have $80,000. Because look back on the sheet, how much cash did we have coming in? Wasn't it five? Okay. We had 5000 in. Now we sold all our non-cash assets. Now we actually have $80,000. It's a good thing. Who re We're zeroing out our non-cash assets. One more. Yep. Because right now our debits and credits did not equal. This is a gain on the realization was we sold it for seventy five thousand, but the book value was sixty thousand. So this was the sale. This was the book value. Glad Mallory asked, because there was one more piece to the puzzle. This is treated like so think of it like um revenue's cousin. Because this was this is money in. Treat like revenue.
I need all of you with me. I see some daydreamers. I see some phone users. Focus. That's step one. What's happening on step two? Look in your notes. We got to say, all right, three partners. I think there's three. We need to record the allocation of the gain. What's a gain actually called? Gain on what? Realization. That gain that you just did of 15,000 is now wiped out because before it was a debit or credit, now it's a debit. So we're basically just using that gain to, for one thing and now we're gonna wipe it out and give it to who? The three partners. They have a weird split though. They have a three, two, and one split out of what? Add those three up. Yep. So the three, two, and one, you add that to know what to divide it by. It's weird. So our first partner, A. Arnett. He gets three-sixths of the money because he's the three portion of the three, two, one. Why do you think he gets so much? <laughs> he works harder. Well, initially when the partner was, partnership was set up, that's how, that's the parameters. Or the, well, the three, yes, yes. Um, It must have been in the book better. Yes, you will know who's the three, who's the two, and who's the one. Yep. Do you see where I got the six? Okay, good. P. Carey, capital, he only gets two six. And then W. Eaton gets one six. So where did I come up with the 15,000? Where did that amount come from? Remember, we had $75,000 worth of assets minus 60 of their book value, okay? That's the gain on realization. The three, two, one split divided by six is the partner share of that gain. And then do you see how the gain is wiped out and now the partners have their money? What is the third thing we do when we're liquidating a partnership or dissolving it? Pay our bills. Prepare the entry to record the payment in full. We have two payables, don't we? So accounts payable, notes payable. Where are we getting those numbers? From that balance sheet. Notes payable and accounts payable. They're being debited to zero out, and they normally have a credit balance. Normally those payables have a credit balance, so we debit them, but we use cash to do it. Cash is gonna go down. Remember how we had $5,000 cash, and then we had that 75,000 come in from selling all our assets? You might say, whoa, wait a minute, I thought the partners got that, but the partners got to foot the bill here to pay the bills. So how much cash do they really have left? 49000 to split. because we had cash coming in, we got more cash from selling all of our non-cash assets. Yeah, they had a gain on the realization and we see a little split happen, but we had $31,000 in bills to pay. Now we can actually give the partners their money. Okay, I would draw all of these T's. I didn't put them in there for you. Oh, whew. Okay, I didn't think I'd make you redraw all those. They're on the bottom, good. 
Okay. Um, it, this is another cool how accounting works out. But cash, we came in with the 5,000. Um, number one was, and I, I wish that there was labels here. Number one, where it says 75,000, that was the sale of non-cash assets. And here is where we paid the liabilities to equal 49,000 still in our pockets. Okay, but then remember, each of these owners came in with a balance and the, this, the, the two was their share of the gain on realization. So then you're forced with balances. AR net, 15 plus 15,000 plus 7,500, he's got a balance of this. Each of them have these balances that miraculously equal the cash, which is kind of cool. So basically this is just a journal entry of the red stuff that's down here. I know you don't have red on your pages. That's it, you guys. Four things that you journalize. You did your weekend homework already. That worked out actually surprisingly well because it allowed us to review a little bit. You were only here a little bit. You got five out of five on your chapter 12 test for that. So now we just need to do exercise 12.9 and we've got the perfect amount of time. The only thing we don't have, we don't have the T accounts. So let's do those as we go. Cool? about that if there's time. Somewhere in the side margin, I would like you to just make our four point list, you know, whether it's in the bottom, whether it's on the side, right, small. Um, the four things we need to do to have a partnership liquidated. What's the first thing? I heard someone whisper it, sell non-cash assets to hopefully, hopefully have what's called a gain on realization, okay? Then what do we do? I think the formal, formal word was allocate, or what Mallory just said, divide to partners based on their ratio. Is it a 50-50 split? Is it a 70-30? Is it a 3-2-1 out of 6? Is it a, if it's a 4 and 2, it'd be 4 out of 8, 2 out of 8, stuff like that. Third, we're going to pay our liabilities. And then, of course, actually pay partners, including their capital balances. And I know I've just said that, I've said it to you many times today, but I can't stress enough the importance. And it has to be done in this order.
do by chance don't have T accounts, do you? Anywhere? Okay, I think we should make them. Cash. My answer key is at home too, cheapers. Grabbed the wrong bag this morning. Cash has a normal debit balance, so there's our plus. Opposite would be a minus, okay? How many partners do we have? Woo! How many liabilities do we have? Is it accounts payable and notes payable? Okay. The 12, 12 eight, right? Okay, so let's just call it liabilities. It would never actually be called that, but it'd be either accounts payable or notes payable. Let's just put AP above it, okay? Um, our normal balance is a plus, and what Mallory just said, we, it looks like we have a $55,000 balance. Let me go back to cash. What was the balance coming in there? Okay. And our two partners, okay, what's one partner's name? Lloyd? Lloyd, all right, good old Floyd. Okay, I don't know if I spelled his name by right, but we'll call it good. Floyd, comma, capital, and who's else? DeWitt, comma, capital. So I would put these T accounts in, okay? It just really paints the picture a little bit better. Um, I'll write that somewhere too. Non-cash assets. I'm not going to list each of them separate. They probably don't even list them separate for you guys. <clears throat> Do we sell them for 100 or was that their value? Okay. Okay. Um, how much did Floyd have in his capital account coming in? I know Mallory said it. What was it? How about DeWitt? Okay. So now we're set up, we're set up. Our end goal is to wipe out, and I don't wanna write on here, but wipe out all of this side, and our end goal is, okay, Floyd, okay, DeWitt, what are you walking away from the partnership with? Let's do this. I'm gonna go over here, so my smart board doesn't get mad. It must say that we sold them for 105 somewhere. Good. We got $105,000 from selling what? What are our non-cash assets? They're maybe not listed, but what are some examples? Selling off your equipment, selling off your parts, selling off your inventory. You've probably seen a business, go a business going out of business. And they're selling things hot, like they're literally selling the shelves because they, what they're trying to do is liquidate their assets, get everything turned into money, even if they're taking a loss here or there. Because that, yes, yes. And what kind of dollar amount are we looking to share with our partners at this point? Five grand, the difference. Okay. What about their um, ratio? What are they? What are they splitting? Sixty forty. Okay. I want to go back though and update our T accounts. Well, I'm giving you all sorts of answers here. But let's update our T accounts a little bit. Cash had a twenty thousand dollar value. But now what is it? It it would be 125 because we had a plus plus that's 105,000 because we sold our non-cash assets for $105,000. Okay.
Next transaction, we're going to allocate to the two partners. So you basically recognize the gain here and wipe it out in the next one. You take that credit gain and you debit it to wipe it out. And then you give to the partners their share of the income. So somewhere it said a 60-40 percentage split. I like that versus the little 3, 2, 1, like our example said. Why does Floyd get more? Well, he must have invested more initially in the business. So now I think what we need to do is go back to those T accounts and, and tell more of that story. Floyd just got three grand, and DeWitt got two grand. And again, those are coming from the gain on realization for, with a 60-40 split. Next up, got to pay our bills. Can I pay my bill right here first so you guys can see it? I'm going to pay it and get that to zero. If I debited liabilities, how did I pay it? We used cash to do it. What's our value of cash? It's 55, isn't it? Okay. Is it 70? What's 125 minus 55? I'm going to do my old school math. You were right. <clears throat> so we're sitting here with $70,000, aren't we? Let's do the actual transaction. I just wanted to do it there while I was still on that screen. The actual transaction is, okay, liabilities, you're gone. But man, we had to dip into our cash fund, didn't we? Liabilities are gone, but cash went down because we had to pay those bills. Now it's the time that the partners are, with their very sad puppy dog eyes, they're going to make their final deal and ride off into the sunset. The business is going to be done. We're left with that $70,000 that we just determined in cash. We're going to wipe that out so it's zeroed out. And Floyd and DeWitt get to actually take their money home with them. I'm going to move from this back to the, this screen a minute. New color. If this is running with 70,000, I'm going to credit 70,000 to get that to be zero. But here's where accounting is kind of cool. DeWitt came in with 45 and he got his little $3,000 cut. So there's your 48. Did I say DeWitt? I meant Floyd. And then here's the 22. 22 plus 48 happens to be 70. So I'll get back to that screen one more time so you can see that transaction because I bopped away from it pretty quick. Could you do this without a T account? Yes. I think the T accounts visualize the, where you're going. So I'm not going to require you to do a T account with problems, practice test or test, but would you like them available? Like, should I put them there, kind of like what we've done now? I'll make little baby tees for you. <clears throat> 